I think he wanted me to do this jump. I don't know why they're so jump it, jump it, jump it, but like, I'd like to get more miles on everything first. What's up, Light Bright Nation? What's up, Light Bright Nation? Now we have moved from the swamp that is the East Coast where you can literally drown when walking on dry land. And we are now in Arizona, Tucson, Arizona to be exact, where it is 105 degrees, airy desert. It's like having a hair dryer in your face. And we're here for a very specific reason. All right, I'm Tyler with ADS Racing Shocks. We're gonna do a little shop tour for you guys and show you what we got going on. They just put the new MBR stuff on their on their stepchild, so we're gonna tune that in a little bit later today, but right now we'll do a little walkthrough through the shop. And yeah, let's check it out. So this place is super cool. Everything is made here, it's insane. So this is where it all happens. This is kind of the toy shop. This is a custom order for a Raptor guy that has a lifted Raptor actually, so we do a lot of custom stuff. This thing is extended length for that lifted truck, but it's all gonna bolt in a stock location. So lots of cool stuff like that. that we do here. So that's what's super awesome. That's why I absolutely love these guys is they do custom stuff. Like if you have something going on or you want to do something special or something that's not just off the shelf, because they do make a lot of just bolt on applications for your Jeep or Toyota and on and on and on every off-road vehicle. If you have like a Chris or a different idea in mind, <laughs> They will, they will go ahead and, and do that for you. Exactly, we do custom stuff, but a lot of what we do is just general production. So on this shelf, we've got our QC area. These items just got finished. They're almost ready to go. They're just doing a pressure test and then we'll box everything up together so that they'll make sure that you have everything in your kit before it leaves. So QC is very important for us. We're really proud of what we do there. And then we just start picking parts. These are jobs almost ready to go. Once we gather up all the components, the guys will assemble them here. This assembly station is something I'm pretty proud of. Every single tech has every part that they need, or I should say every tool that they need to succeed with the job. So they just grab a bin, go to town. We've got clicker heads going together. Looks like some Gen 2 Raptor stuff going together. All kinds of good things. Like you said, everything is made here. We inventory everything here. And we kind of do a little hot lap through the inventory rooms. We've got like every shaft that we ever need. And if we don't have it, we just make another one. <laughs> we literally make a, a new part number every week, it seems like, because new vehicles are coming out every year. We're really pushing new product development, so lots of good stuff. We got strut mounts for every vehicle that you could think of. Yeah, if it's four-wheel drive or even just a two-wheel drive off-road type vehicle, they're gonna make something for it. And it's all top of the line shit. It really is. It's all like super badass stuff. There's no like, we're only worried about how it drives on road type of thing. Like this is all really, really cool shit. Because I think we've proven at this point that size does in fact matter. The shaft size, piston size. All of those. <laughs> it, it gets. This is one of our two and an eighth pistons. They're actually our most advanced piston because it's small. We have to work with a limited flow area. So we work really hard to get all the flow through this fancy little guy. But this is what you would have in a two and an eighth or equivalent for the rest of the market is like a two inch diameter. This is your two five. This is what's actually in your guys' MBR shocks. Nearly every OEM application is gonna have a 2.5 diameter. This is our, our staple, our meat and potatoes, if you will. And then it jumps up to a three inch, some race car parts here, right? 3.0, big guy. And then this one's fun, the four inch. Oh my God. <laughs> Why isn't that in the MBR shocks? That I have? <laughs> He's like, you don't need that. Well, they're a three inch diameter, but they're a twin tube design. So this piston is inside of that big old 3.0 body. Oh, so. And we'll crack them open and I'll show you how it all works. Okay, so that's the question we got a lot was, I want to see those things opened. I want to oh, see yeah. inside that, like, so everybody was really like, wait, why did you go with those? What's going on? So really quick backstory is Phil Licardi, Shock Jesus, who's been tuning all of our stuff for years now. He's the one that got us, well, we've been ADS before. He's the one that was like, you need to get back with them. They have been doing some really cool shit and I know on your Jeep, you don't want to compromise, get back with ADS because they have some cool shit. So that's that's why there was like a, a turn to this and we were trying to do coilover bypass all around, but on a full frame street Jeep, it's very hard to do that front and rear. Yeah. It was almost impossible. Packaging is unrealistic for most people. Right. It's not a weekend job to do that. <laughs> right. And then so, I, but I, and I wanted 14s. Even he was just like, are you sure you don't want just 12s? I was like, no, I yeah. want 14s. Yeah. He was literally trying to push me to 12s. And I'm like, no, 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 I want 14s. He's like, all right, I guess. Like, if you, <laughs> yeah. But I didn't want to do it again. 
we were cutting into the frame. We were doing a bunch of custom stuff. Like Buy this once, is cut once, cry once. Cry this is the call. end of the stepchild as far as cutting into that frame and doing all that. That frame can't take anymore. So this is it. And I wanted to go big and bad. And this is the biggest baddest stuff that was on the market. Really? Yeah. That MBR was designed exactly kind of what you're using it for. It was designed around 4,800 single shock limited ultra four class. The only thing really different is the cage. You don't have the cage on your Jeep, but it's essentially a 4,800 car. You've yeah. got the axles, the tire size, you know, bigger tires really, but right. it's designed around 600 plus horsepower, you know, a single shock application maximum performance and that's what we're after right that's that's what i wanted to do and that's why we went to ads because they made this it, and it's pretty new we've been working on it for about five years but it released it a year and a half ago right yeah. so that's that's what happened phil Accardi said get with them because this is this is what you need to run and and he loves you guys so that's oh, that's yeah. where we're Phil's, at Phil's the yeah <laughs> be super cool once we crack into them to show you the kind of technology in it but the piston stuff is really cool because there's different kinds of pistons and it gets super crazy and everybody likes different stuff but i know that they know their sh and they know what they're making the rest of this inventory is kind of just parts of a shock everything that we need from seal heads to like yeah. sex everything's sexy top cast. <laughs> everything's well, sexy. i could give all the credit to our machinists they do an excellent job. These parts aren't polished before they're anodized. The surface finish is just amazing right out of the machine. Like they are super anal about all of that stuff. And I really appreciate the effort that they put into it. Here's a good one. This isn't polished. It just comes out of the machine looking so shiny. Well, that one's a little greasy, but you get the idea. <laughs> We're not gonna church it up here. This is live. This, this is my favorite part right here. Oh, not the clicker? But not, the not the clicker, the made in America. <laughs> All right, we're over here at the fabrication shop. This is where we do all the welding for like bypasses or anything that has a weld mint. We got Jacob and Wyatt over here. They're organizing for the day, getting ready. They got their badass Miller dynasties that they get to play with and they get to do that with it. Oh, wow. oh nice. These guys are no slouch on the tape machine, wow. that's for sure. It's like a freaking machine did it. We just got picked up. Normally these shells are just loaded with shocks, but they just picked up on Friday, so. Here we are. Well, that's good Long for you. weekend. That's good for yeah. You. Yeah. 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 Here's where we do all of our, our body prep. When you get our tubing from the supplier after post machining, it looks pretty rough. So what we do is we, we grain sand them. That's how we get that cool finish on them, the nice sanded spiral mm -hmm. stuff. We have that cool machine over there that does that. We used to do all that stuff by hand. So we were really, truly back in the day, built from scratch, handmade, and we still <laughs> do that, that by hand. Yeah, I spent many an hour underneath the sander doing that, but <laughs> now we're high production with that bad machine over there. They don't leave them sanded because they'll rust over the weekend. So they sand them and wrap them and send them out so that you get the cleanest product possible. These are your bypass tubes. This little guy on the left is actually huge. And the one on the right is what you would put on a four inch bypass. So your normal play toys with a two and a half or 3.0 bypass would have these three quarter inch tubes. And this is a big old monster one inch. You can see that this thing even fits inside of there. It's so big. I think these are actually going on. Yeah, these are big trophy truck 4.0 five tube 18s. Big old monsters. Those are some of my favorite shocks ever just because they're huge. So those will probably go on the trophy truck that we're looking at that used trophy truck that me and Josh are looking at. You aren't supposed to tell Brittany yet. Um. <laughs> this is our finished inventory. Every box here is ready to be shipped to a consumer. Tons of ZR2 stuff. You can see it's kind of organized by Chevy Ford Dodge. Late model Chevy stuff, late model Ford stuff. Our Can-Am MBR kits are in stock. So we do make a package and we'll show that later. A full MBR setup to bolt right into your Can-Am. Turn it into a race car with just a shock swap. No need to mess around with tuning it's already good to go out of the box but you can amplify that setup for your driving style if need be so it's already tuned ready to go like yeah. you guys already have because you guys have them. them you guys have a lot of time on so the car that we tested on is actually hitting the speed limiter and i couldn't drive it any faster or harder so <laughs> i think we won i'm not sure this is exactly the box that showed up to you guys i think mm -hmm. same 14. one 14 yeah. inch mbrs right on the shelf ready to go no need to wait almost our entire product line is in stock right now maybe one or two items is not that's so, pretty insane. Yeah. Honestly. Like yeah. I said, the team has been hustling. Yeah. You just took a shot in the dark on ours because we didn't have any weights for you. We don't yeah. know what any of the stuff. And it's pretty freaking good, but like there's the nothing. Fine yeah. So there's nothing like actual fine tuning and shock tuning. It's the same thing. If you do an engine swap or you put heads, cam, and all that, you have to tune your engine. You can't just throw it in there and drive. I mean, you can, but like it's Work, not. Works good out of the box. 
<laughs> but there's a lot of improvement in there. And that was a good thing to bring up right now is because if you buy any of these from them, except for probably the X3, they'll go ahead and tune the stuff for yeah, you. we will. <laughs> you don't need to tune the X3 at this point, but yeah, I mean... You, some guys will, and a lot of the adjustment is in the clicker head, so there's a huge range of adjustment in those MBRs. We'll, right. We'll show that today when we're playing with yours. We'll take them apart, revalve them, and then we'll just dial it in from the outside. He's going to play with mine. Oh, yeah. You know. <laughs> I've ridden so many coilover Jeeps that like they ride so bad. And I'm not going to name any companies. It doesn't matter. But I get in it and you start driving it and I just want out. Like I want out of it. I don't know who tunes them. They say they come tuned for that Jeep lift for that coilover. And they're not. No, you I, take I it know to what you, you're talking about. You take it to you guys. Or, well, if, you know, if you bought coilers from them or, or Phil or whatever. And then you get it shock tuned. It will blow your freaking mind. Nine like quit sleeping on this shock tuning. I'm telling you. It is, it is night and day. Yeah, it's the most important thing. Like you said, you consumer will buy coilovers and bypasses and hydro bumps and all this stuff, and it's all just general product mix-matched together. If you don't make it work together as a team or as a full system, you just spend a lot of money for looks, and but, you're wasting that race car that you just had. Yeah, yeah. they're going to maybe do some tuning on their shop Jeep, but if you've got a whole drawer system, you're running a 40-inch spare, a rear-mounted, whatever it is, and you change the back by two, three, four hundred pounds, it's not. It's just not going to perform the same. It, exactly. it will not. So you have to have it tuned for your application, and at that point, it will literally blow your mind. We do it all the time. I send out valving, valving kits to cu customers, or we'll just build them a full package with lots of information up front, weights, you know, usage. Are you going to drive it fast or slow? Are you going to rock crawl it? Are you going to go in the desert? All of it. Give me all the info. We'll work together. We'll build you a package. And here's where I become the pain in the butt that you guys all know. I want the step child to do everything. I want it to drive nice on the road. I want to go fast speed desert. I want to do insane rock crawling. I want it to be the, the like overall, I want the Jeep to do everything jack really well. Right. I want it to be the jack of all trades, but I don't want it to be like a 50%. I want it to be at like 80 or 90% of all those all trades <laughs> so so that's where i've been searching and why we've changed things so much with chris and why we went triangulated four link and on and on and on we still wanted to keep it as a jeep like we could have done trailing arms but then we're cutting crazy into the body and doing a little split or a little bench in the back and i'm trying to keep it I, when you see it i want to be like wow that's a that's still a jeep like that's yeah, just yeah. a it's jeep with a big jeep. tires mm -hmm. it's not a like a juggy right still. and it's, so that's yeah. been my goal ac big power big suspension Big rock crawling, all of it, and I think we're, I, I think yeah, we're really there. We're there. Yeah, I think we're we really there. Just need to twist it a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> it needs a cage. Well, that's. <laughs> Come on, get after it. <laughs> so if you look for our Jeep people, this is the Jeep wall. Go ahead and back up, back up, back up. Look at all that. <sighs> so it's, it's anything and everything you want. So from a two and a half smooth body piggyback reservoir, a two and a half smooth body with adjusters, zero three inch lift, another two and a half smooth body piggyback reservoir, three two bypass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Once you go to that 3-2 bypass, that was really hard to get away from. But, I mean, we have internal bypasses on the MBRs. But a bypass with just a spring, it is wonderful for so many people. I wouldn't have changed if I wasn't the kind of crazy Kevin that I am. A nice spring with a 3-2 bypass. That is the way to go. If you're not as crazy as me, these, these piggyback reservoirs, smooth bodies will also do it. And the price point really does jump quite a bit. But the amount of suspension you get really does jump quite a bit. There's you Gladiator guys right here. So the rears are different on Gladiators, the front's the same. And then for you JK guys, they've got a whole wall of JK stuff all the way down. Anything and everything you need right here in stock. And if you're dumb like Kevin, they have a whole wall of custom stuff. <laughs> he means if you have yourself a Chris, there's a whole wall of custom stuff. <laughs> Basically, if you're dumb like us, collectively, and you like to cut up a perfectly good Jeep, Power tools. Power tools. <laughs> Those things are so light. So this is what I've been really wanting to see. I know you guys have been asking about it, but we're gonna actually, he's got everything apart. He's got the whole internal, the MBR 
taken apart, and he's going to go over and show you an external tube bypass and the internal bypass, how it compares and how it works. So a bypass shock's main function is to have position-sensitive dampening. By position-sensitive, we have tubes. They're oriented on the outside of the body in zones. So this would be our first compression zone that would work from full droop to about five, six inches of up travel. Yeah, you could kind of see. Imagine the piston traveling back and forth. As it travels past this zone, it shuts it off of essentially and then it'll keep cruising up and hit this zone and up and up and up until we hit our bump zone which is this part of the shock up here this is acts as your final stop whatever we put on the piston is what the flow is going to go through the piston because there's no more bypass on an mbr so generally you want it riding somewhere yeah you want to be in a sweet spot like for this shock this particular one We'd want the piston right about here because it's gonna be acting on these rebound ports. Your first compression is gonna be like from droop to ride height. So ride height should be right around here. And then from here you have a little bit of bypass and then one stage before your bump zone. So this will give you control in all those different zones. Right, so if you're off, if you're too compressed yeah. or too extended, then you're then you're missing out on your yeah, bypass. Exactly, like the front of Stepchild right now is sitting right about here. Ideally in a race car, we'll have it set down here in the lower zone so that it can flow through all of these zones mm -hmm. before when it acts against some t terrain. Right, but, but because of the height and what we have limiting, yeah. we- We can adjust it though, we're not, we're not out of luck. This system is fully adjustable. You can see these are each little zone and they're little valves. I don't know if we can see it, but they open and close and they're adjustable for how much open and close we are allowed. So these two are open all the way. They're on position six. I can see we wrote that on there. This one's about halfway. This one is one click open, just barely opening. And this one's shut. So it's giving us a big, long bump zone. Gotcha. So on Stepchild, it's not a race car. We're gonna open it up, get it to move a little more freely. It's still going to party really hard, but it's going to be a lot more supple than your traditional smooth body shot. Right. Supple. Well, so that the front. Now, the rear is actually sitting pretty decent. Yeah. Right? The rear, we're the six. rear, we have seven inches of up travel, so it's sitting in a happy spot. I'm going to get the shaft assembly and lay it next to it just to verify where we're at in our zones. And then I'm going to adjust these rings and our free bleed orifices for that setup effectively. Right. If we put this on a trailing arm right now, it might have been way closer, but this is shock <laughs> tuning, right? Right. So the front because of all the steering were very limited which is why he was trying to tell me to go with 12s and of course i fought and wanted to go 14s 12s would have actually been more <laughs> proper it really is. but anyway anyway we went 14s and so what that did is it it kind of put us more compression so i only have about five inches five and a half inches of up travel instead of seven inches of up travel which moves us further you know further into the compression which technically is what we had with the 10 inch we ran right in the middle because we only had five inches of up because we had five inches of down but now we have like five inches of up and 556 inches of down <laughs> <laughs> and we'll make it work good in the in the fast stuff too we'll get that actual to come out and you'll have tons of up travel to soak up some bumps right so the rears there's definitely a lot closer because we're seven and seven 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 are good because it is a 14 inch travel shock but he rode in the back we didn't even go off road yet he just rode in the back and went down the street and hit a couple curves and like, we're taking them apart yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, <"This> sucks. <laughs> i love it when we do shock videos because you start talking about things like shafts and pistons and orifices these are literally the best that's innuendos they're, that's what she says i can't i can't keep up with the that's what she said even, so just put them in yourself you're, because you're not even everywhere you're not even keeping up with the seven and seven chris is saying you want to drink seven and seven i've been oh. thirsty I for days <laughs> we talked about how these rings are adjustable how for how much opening they have this is the adjustment and it's kind of hard to see maybe if i turn it like that you can see that it's on a ramp oh yeah you can so each little position will change how far the ring opens which is kind of the same well not kind of it's the same function as your external bypass opening that plunger up same function just a different way of going about it because we have to package it inside of the coil of your body itself so there's nothing else like this on the market not not with this kind and that much adjustment yeah so you for an internal bypass, basically. Right. So you, we're compromising here because it's packaging, right? So we had external bypasses, but we had a coil spring separately. I wanted coilovers, but I still wanted bypasses. Yep. We couldn't package all that. This is how we wound up here with the internal bypass setup. Other internal bypasses don't have that much adjustment on the inside. And so you're having to constantly change the valve stacks to get what you want, where this you get the valve stacks kind of where you want, but then you can really fine tune yeah. it like you would an external bypass. So it really is a ton of technology built all into packaging that will One actually fit. Right. Shaft. 
They were saying that this is some real high-speed new technology, but we've been putting shafts in bodies for thousands of years, so... Not so much new technology. <laughs> it's not really new. It's just a new way to do it. <laughs> Okay, so everything is officially back together and we're gonna take it to go do a little test run, see how everything's working, but what exactly did we do? So we pulled a little bit of compression valving out of the front and the rear. We opened up some zones because it is sitting a little lower in the front. We had to open up those zones that we showed you earlier to get some more flow in the ride height area. From there, a little spring tweak, and that's about it. Let's hope this is it. <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's a fine, we're hoping this is it, because remember, we, we were rushing to get it to Pigeon Forge, Tennessee for the Jeep invasion. So certain things about like ease of accessibility to work on these on a mechanical level, we didn't put all that in there yet. So Chris, when we get back, has definitely got- We got, we, we got some things we gotta change. <laughs> some tweaking things to make it easier to access these, pull them off, pull them on, stuff like that, if we ever need to. We won't have to touch them once we're done. This Finger, yeah, it's gonna be a one and done. We have full faith, he did fantastic. Y'all, I would like to point out that it is like 104 degrees right now. There are no clouds. It's hot as hell. She's in a she's in a windbreaker. I put a windbreaker. Well, because I don't want to get she sunburned. Want to burn. I'm gonna get I mean, cooked. Smart woman. I'm. I mean, I'm cooking, just not getting burnt. So I don't like skin cancer. Kevin's. They're doing a loop right now. They're just doing it slow, and then he's gonna pick up speed, and we're just gonna see what the suspension does. touchy like we put everybody in the back and it's like I mean you can tell because that's not where you we're add, tuning for you add Chris and I and it's about 300 pounds total yeah so and you can definitely tell the difference that's how it's but it's it so is. important to shock tune for what you usually have right and if you're loading and unloading that I would have to change the preload in it I got bit on my forehead right now by what it's very much what I want it's, it's set up loose but I like that in the dirt when I'm sliding around corners I don't want it stiff I love the fact that if I hit the gas, I can stand it up and float over stuff. I can let out and let it settle versus it being being super stiff. And then when I'm going slow, I don't mind the I don't mind the rockiness, but if I want that to go away, I can just open the caps and tighten down yeah, the yeah, the compression. The rebound in the compression. Yeah. So if I really want to, I can do that. But I really enjoy not feeling anything when I'm It's a Cadillac. Off-road. It's yeah, an off-road Cadillac. It's absolutely amazing. 
I keep wanting me to do this jump. I'd like to get more miles on everything first. I don't know why they're so jump it, jump it, jump it, but like I should probably drive it and then, it you know, like check over everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I could probably launch it a whole lot harder, but... I'm a little hesitant to, like, send it over the jump or, like, go crazy ham because we have almost no miles on this, no off-road miles. We haven't gotten, gotten to recheck over all the arms and check over all the suspension. And here I am just, like, romping on it and trying to get it to do crazy stuff. But it feels fantastic. And what's even crazier is that we're at like 30, 32 PSI in the tires on K-Specs, which also have a stiffer sidewall and it feels this freaking good. When you air I, down. I never road. go off, I never go off road at 32 PSI. Like I'm always gonna air down at least to 20. Which is gonna be even more cush. Right, it was gonna be more, it, it, way, way more cush. So it's, it's pretty damn impressive. I kind of wanted to air down, but I didn't want to spend the time to air back up. Also, I didn't bring the hose to air. I have the compressor, but no way to actually air up. <laughs> this is crazy, crazy good. I want to go play at the dunes. We got to go down to San Hollow and play around and actually do some rock crawling too. Now, before we close out this video, remember earlier how we talked about how ADS has not just the customizable universal kits like we have on the stepchild with the MBRs. They also have bolt on kits for very specific applications like this guy behind me. So ever since we got a Jeep, I always wanted it to move like a side by side. And as you can see, this is what I mean. This is what I want my Jeep to do. And now it does it. It actually does it. They do it now, yeah, for sure. So on the stepchild, what you guys got was some universal 14-inch coilovers. That's why we had to tune them. We're making bolt-in options for the MBR line. So this is our Can-Am package, two and four seat. This just happens to be our four seat shop vehicle, but it's a bolt-in kit that's already pre-tuned. So it's a one and done for the for you guys out there. You don't have to change anything really. Right, you so can, but you don't to need go. to. Yeah, so it's ready to go, but you do have you'll have plenty of adjustment in here. Yep. So if you need to change stuff up by, what did you say, about 20% or yeah, so? Yeah, it's about 20% more inside the clicker that you can get out of it. Right, it's a, it's a good amount. So if you have something, I don't know why, big heavy bumpers up front. Yeah, some guys are running big heavy bumpers or they're just heavy passengers to begin with. It allows you to <laughs> dial it in. Uh, that's true, because you can load up a lot. Yeah, they could put a lot of meat in this thing. Yeah, and roof racks with <laughs> stuff yep. on top Spare of people tires, overlanding. stereos. Dead bodies. Yeah. That's weird. Okay. <laughs> what What are the front and rears? Of, are they the same? The 12s, no, 14s? so it's a spec length. A lot of Can-Ams, well, this Can-Am platform in general will bottom out on the ground. The car will physically hit the ground. So we corrected a lot of that geometry. This car actually has three inches of belly height that full compression now, where before they're actually subterranean. So you're not only what? just, you're not <laughs> only getting just a shock package that's tuned for it, the geometry of the suspension's been corrected at the same time. I had no idea. I've never actually driven many Can-Ams because I'm too short. They yeah. sit down and back. They like yeah. they put you in like a Formula One like Kinda seating like position. Yeah, you're yeah and you're in down it. and back, and I just I don't like that. You can't but, see over. So there. I've always liked the Polarises because they yeah, sit up they high and, the, and you have more visibility. Mm -hmm. Being in rock crawling, I generally like that. But we did just buy a new Maverick R, and I'm hoping that it's not yeah. like this. <laughs> I bought it. I don't care, but like. I'm hoping it's not down and back. This is what I deal with. Never sat in one, never driven one, just up and decided. It's got. Like, a two, two days ago, like, I want to buy this. It's got a DC, it's got a seven speed DCT and 240 horsepower with anti-lag. How can you not buy that? He's like, you see these specs? Like, yeah. how do you not buy that? Apparently you don't not buy that because he did. But the good news is, is if he can't see over it, I probably can, so I'll just drive it. This is kind of interesting. Uh, they've got some, some funny gas here. They literally have like a 10 pound bottle of freaking nitrous sitting between the seats. I don't know if that's regulation for anything. <laughs> it's literally just the freaking 10 pound or is that a 20 pound? I don't even know. That's a pretty, yeah, it's probably a 10 pound bottle of NOS. You know, we could put NOS on the Jeep. <laughs> so according to Chris, the Jeep is titties. Big, big titties. Good titties. Like driving on a cloud of them. You have to get your freaking shocks tuned. If you've already bought a coilover system or something, I you need to just get with ADS because it just rides so yeah. freaking amazing. If you're running any of their stuff, they'll help you set it up right. Absolutely. Any ADS equipped vehicle will work with you and get you set up.
for whatever you're doing rock crawling desert racing street right. driving so anything. so the stuff that you have is just for a basic outfitted jeep basically but right. if you put it's drawers a, and big spare tire if you have yeah. a 40 spare tire or you're c yep. carrying a whole family like it's it's going to change a little bit absolutely right. yeah I'm telling you, shock tuning will change your freaking life. Off the shelf stuff is great, but it can all always be so much better. It's just custom for what you are yep. running. That's exactly what it is. But anyways, huge shout out to ADS. These MBRs are sick <laughs> as hell. And Chris for getting them put and on Chris in five days. And Chris for getting them put on in like five days. <laughs> Clearly, next up is actually going and getting it on the trail, on the rocks, and seeing what she's capable of. Yes, we definitely need to do that. I haven't been rock crawling in forever. But until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Remember, you can find all your Light Bright Nation merch and decals at lightbrightstudios.com. As always, we love you, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye, guys. Mwah. What am I saying? <laughs> no, 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 like Wait, it's on the market. It's tatas, big ones. Big ones. <laughs> big ones. Gigantic what is it, Chris? Tatas. It's very tatas. I thought you were supposed to clean up. The bathroom. There was a guy in the bathroom. Okay, I'm. <laughs> I, get, I get it. Just... We're trying to go eat. I know. <laughs>